Hello everyone, welcome back. This is your third video in array methods. So make sure you check out part one and part two, which were the previous two videos. Now, I'm, pre I'm pretty sure this is gonna be the last video on array methods, so if you're about sick and tired of them, trust me, me too, I'm ready to move on to something new. So let's go over some of the last essential array methods, and then we'll be uh, basically array pros. And you know what? The number one way to be a pro in software development <laughs> is to check out our sponsor, DevMountain. DevMountain offers classes in JavaScript-based web development as well as iOS and other topics that you might be interested in. DevMountain offers classes in JavaScript-based web development, so we're talking JavaScript, React, Node.js, how to put all these pieces together to build real-world applications and get a job in the industry. They are very career-centric, so their goal is to help you succeed in the industry. When you go through this boot camp, you're gonna get years of information condensed in a matter of weeks, <laughs> so it's very intense, but it's definitely worth it if you wanna kickstart your career. So check them out, guys, link in the description. In this video, we're gonna be working with an array called grades, which we're gonna have numbers in here, and uh, you can use other data types, so you can put strings in here, or functions, or whatever you want it to be. We're just using numbers for consistency and for simplicity. So we're gonna assign this to grades, so now grades contains these three elements. The first method we're gonna be talking about is concat. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be cre creating another array, let's just call it grades B, and fill this with some information. You can put whatever you want in here. And the way this works is we're going to say grades.concat and then pass in grades B. And what this is going to do is it's going to return a new array with all of the information put together. So we press enter and there's that array. So if you wanted to use that, you would need to assign it to another variable. So if we wanted to do that, we could just say let tacos equals grades.concat and then tacos is gonna contain that array very useful, good variable names. All right, what else? Well, the thing here is that this is very similar to the push method. So for example, I could take tacos and I could say tacos.push and I could pass some elements in here separated by commas, like so. And what that's going to do is it's going to change the tacos array. And you get that fuller, ex the extended array where we put all these extra elements in here. So what is the difference between push and concat? Well, the thing is, is that push will change the original array and return the length. Concat does not change the original array, and all it does is it returns the new array. So, that means if we scroll up here and look at grades, it's going to remain the same, as well as grades B. So if we go down here and type out grades, you can see it still contains three elements. So if you want to change the original array by adding elements into it, then you'll want to use the push method. If you want to create a new array by combining multiple arrays, then you will want to use the concat method. Now you may think to use the plus operator as you might do in strings. So for example, you might say grades plus grades B, but this is not going to be what you expect. You see that this is actually a string. So if you want to create a string from arrays, this might work, but the actual return here is not an array, it's a string with all of the elements separated by commas. So not quite the same thing. So you might want to only use that plus operator with strings and with numbers. Unless you're trying to, of course, get a string. Then you might want to use it for arrays. The next method I wanted to talk about is the includes method. And what this will do is it will return whether or not an array contains a particular value. So we are going to type out grades just to see what's inside of it. We got 20, 22, and 39. So what we might do is we might say grades.includes and then pass in 22. And it's going to give us true. So it's a simple yes or no answer if it contains an element. So if we put something that doesn't exist in here, we're gonna get false. A more useful method is the index of method because this is actually going to give us the index of that element. So if we say 22 and instead of using includes, we say index of, well, this is going to give us one, which indeed is the index because we have zero, one. So not only does this tell us that it exists in the array, but it also tells us where it exists in the array. So it's a little bit more useful. And if you put something that doesn't exist in the array, you're going to get negative one. So you can check to see if it exists by seeing if the value is negative one or not. And on top of that, you can tell where it exists by referencing the return number there. So negative one, it doesn't exist. Anything else, it's the index of that element. So in this case, 220, we get negative one. 22, we get one, because that's the index. The next method I wanna to talk to you guys about is the join method. 
and this can take an array and produce a string. So let's go through an example of this. We're gonna say grades.join and just press enter. And you can see we get a string here, 20, 22, and 39. Grades itself stays the same, so this does not change the original value. It basically just converts it to a string with a delimiter. So what is a delimiter? Well, it's just a way to separate different elements. We can specify a different delimiter by passing in an argument. So we could say join and pass in a string with a space in it like so, and we get 20, 22, 39. So you can see it's very versatile, meaning we can change this up however we want. We could put no space, we could put a comma, and so forth. This might come up if you're working with a comma separated value file, for example, because they're going to look a lot like this. So definitely make sure you understand the join method. I also like to add that I did put the comma in there, but that actually is the default behavior. So if you just don't put anything, it's gonna use that comma there. The last method I wanna to talk to you guys about is slice. And what this is going to do is it's going to extract a section of an array and return a new array. So let's go through an example. We have the grades array, but it's a little short. So let's just make it a little bit longer. We're just gonna add some more data in here. Got some pretty high grades up in here. Dang that smart kid, I tell you what. All right, so that's the grades array. And what we can do is say grades.slice. And then if we don't put anything in here, it's just a normal array, that's not useful. But what we can do is put the start index. So let's say we wanna start at index three, and then we want to go up to index five. That's going to give us two values, index three and index four. You gotta know that the first is inclusive, but the stopping index is not inclusive, so it's exclusive. So what that means is it's going to start at index three, so we have zero, one, two, three, right here, and then it's gonna go up to five, but not include it. So it's just gonna get these two right here. So that is how the slice method works. Now if you leave off that second index, it's just going to go to the end of the array, so from wherever you start up until the end. That might be useful for you guys as well too. Awesome, so we've talked a lot about arrays, but we haven't really gone through much on iterating through arrays. Yes, we did talk about for loops and some different things we could do, but there's actually different ways to iterate through arrays. For example, there is the for each method. It's a very important method. Yeah, it's another method, I lied, but <laughs> the purpose of it is, a, um, is much different than what we've been talking about so far. This is part of a category known as iteration methods, which are basically methods that do something to each element. So very, very important and essential to know if you want to succeed with arrays. So check out the next video because that's going to be tremendously helpful. Thank you guys. I'll see you then.